Kent, what you got cooking today? We're grilling some salmon. That's what you told me you was wanting, remember? Oh, may, maybe not that kind. Folks, I got a recipe here that will blow you out of the water. It is a grilled salmon with a butter, brown sugar, smoky glaze. Woo, it'll get you going. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the backyard and the good Lord, who did he bless us today. We got about an inch of rain this morning. Mm, ain't nothing better than to start the day off right with a good inch of rain and then get on the grill and cook something. Now there has been a great discussion going on in our house ever since Shannon come along. Is it salmon or salmon? In Oklahoma, it is pronounced salmon. On the, the fillet- The is silent. No. It tastes bad with the L in it. No, you have to realize that if the good Lord put that in there as a letter, he wanted you to use it. That's why today, folks, we are grilling up some salmon fillets. Whew, and we're gonna put a glaze on it that will blow your mind. Now, I have got some tips and tricks and everything for you to keep this thing going smoothly. And so let's start with whew, magic. When you go to buy salmon, if you can try to buy that wild caught fresh salmon, never frozen. Just look, you at a meat market where they sell that fish, just ask them, say, hey, is this good fresh caught wild salmon? You're gonna be so much better off in the long run. Now you can see we've got four little fillets here and I do like to leave the skin on mine. Now, some people grill them and then they slip under and leave that skin on the grill. I like to keep it there because it helps hold the fish together. It's there for a reason. You always got to make sure before you season them or anything, pat them good and dry. Both sides. You be asking yourself, well, how, how come you want to do that? Well, today is Wednesday and I just felt like it. Really, it's going to help that seasoning stick to it a little. We need to get anything that might been on there, any film, any water off that piece of meat. So what are we going to season with? It's simple, folks. And I'll tell you a trick. Salt is going to help this side and the other side from not sticking. And I like to get a use a good coarse sea salt. Put it on there pretty generously. I'll tell you something that's really good on it is some of that good smoked sea salt, if you can find it. Whew. Let's go ahead and put a little on top here. Get out, you can't get there, you'll be in a pitcher. Coarse ground black pepper. Now, don't be too sparingly with it because I like to have a bunch on there. I like to make sure it sticks, so give it a little patting on there to make sure it all stays in place. Folks, while we're letting that sit there just a minute, let me give you a really important thing that's got to be going on. Hot grill. Yeah, it's got to be hot, it's got to be cleaned, and it's got to be oiled. Because as you know, if you've ever grilled some fish, if it ain't, it stick to it like poly grip to dentures. I mean, you won't never get that stuff off there. So make sure that it is hot, make sure it is clean, and make sure it is oiled. Now you can use an olive oil, you can use a spray, oil on there, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that thing is greased before you start. So folks, we're going to let that set. And while that sets, let's put together this glazing sauce that goes together. Three tablespoons of butter in a little old saucepan and a clove of minced garlic. Then we're going to add three tablespoons of brown sugar. We're going to put a little avocado oil Yes, you heard me right. I do love some avocado oil. Me and Shan use it on a regular basis. We'll give that a little stir, take it back over, put it on a little heat where we can get it all incorporated well, and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients to it as it's starting that process. A teaspoon of soy sauce, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and the juice of a lemon. Give it a good stir till we get everything back in there incorporated well and it's begin to come back to a really low boil. So what are we going to do? Turn it off and I'm going to let it sit right there. Now this is the glaze and the finish for that salmon that we're fixing to throw on the grill. All right, folks, fire's good and hot. It's cleaned, it's oil, it's greased, it's ready to go. Meat side down first. Ain't them pretty little rascals.
And this is a very quick method because these aren't as thick as what some of y'all might see, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. These is pretty thin. So we're gonna shut that lid just for a minute. This vent is closed. This is the third open. We're gonna try to circulate a little bit of that smoke. We'll be able to tell when we need to turn that. We'll turn it back over. We'll go to glazing that side as we're getting closer. Now today we cooking with mesquite and oak combined because I like that flavor on some fish. Now, a lot of people are gonna use some fruit wood and I have before in the past with different kinds of fish like a cherry or a peach. But I tell you something that's pretty good. If you can mix a pecan or a hickory with a fruit wood and you can go back to that. You experiment with what you got, see what you like the best, it'll all be good. So folks, when this salmon is about that thickness, which is, I'm thinking three quarters to seven eighths, about two, two and a half minutes on that meat side and then we'll turn it. We just want that to get them good grill marks on there and begin to turn colors just a little. I think it's there, folks. You can see if Shannon zoom in here, see that begin to change that white color all the way along here. That's that fat and that salmon and I don't want to lose it. You want to make sure you got a spatula or something that's big enough to catch your fish. You can do this with tongs, but sometimes it'll actually tear up when you grab it. Ooh, look at that prettiness. You can see that color where we got them grill marks and everything is looking good. It is time to go to basting. We flipped them over. That top side is just like I want it, but I want to give them some glaze, some good smoky flavor, some sweetness that that butter is going to bring along in it because, folks, it ain't going to take long to finish this deal up. So let's get to basting. Make sure you try to get them sideboards if you can. Everybody needs a little love. It's burning my fingers, Shan. What we're gonna do? We're gonna shut the lid for 30 seconds. Who wants to count? How about you, Frank? Beagle, you wanna count? Or are you sleeping? Which is it? I think the Beagle says he ain't counting no more either. So this is fixing to come off, folks. Just as a good steak does, so does this do. It's gonna to have to rest before we can cut it. It will continue to cook just a little. 30 seconds is up. Whew, I like that. One more quick little basting. And make sure you reserve just a little of this for you later on. Looky yonder what we got. Salmon with an L and an M both. I know it's gonna be good. Now we have let that thing rest we have. We're gonna put one more little coat of this here drizzling on it because I like this stuff. Bone appetit. Mm. Like I always tell you, praise the Lord, pass the biscuits and give me a whole side of fish because that dog will hunt right there. That will eat. Folks, the, the smoke that that oak brings, and I've cooked over mesquite most of my life, but there's a different flavor that's combined when the two woods go together. And it is so good on a piece of salmon. It is for a fact. But it's got such great taste. The salt and pepper is really all you need on this piece of fish. Time you glaze it, I get the smoked paprika, the lemon. You get just a little tang from the soy sauce, but the brown sugar balances that out. Mm. It is what I call, what's that French word, Jen? I don't know. It's what Scooby-Doo would say, yabba dabba doo, that's some good eating. That's, Scooby that's didn't say that? No. Oh, I thought he did. And three little things that I told you to make sure you do. Pat it dry, make sure you season it well, bottom top, both sides salt, that's going to help keep it from sticking. Make sure that grill is hot and clean and greased and ready to go. Now you've seen it didn't take long, maybe two and a half minutes on that meat side first then flipped it back over. It was probably a minute and a half to two. If you ever begin to see the white fat bubble up and make spots or color in there, you've cooked that salmon too long. You are taking some of that good juiciness out of there. So be careful when you cook him not to overcook him. We are so proud you stopped by today. Thank God for the good rain that we got last night in Southwest Oklahoma. It is a blessing, it is. And remember folks, we have always been drier than we have ever been wetter since Noah left. My dad said we got a half inch when Noah couldn't even float by here. So appreciate all your prayers and thoughts and concerns. Be sure and tell your friends and neighbors, check out this channel. Hey, there's some great things going on. I wanna thank my little sweet, beautiful producing, directing wife, 
and the Beagle, the culinary expert, and Frank the Watchdog. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there. All the information will be below right there like always. God bless and see y'all down the trail and get you some salmon with an L in it. You know, folks, we have had a lot of people ask, hey, what's your backyard cooking setup look like? Could you show us around? Well, you're in luck today. We're going to pull the curtain back a little and let you peek in out here. Now, sure, we cook in the backyard. We do, but we always cook down at the river. We cook on some ranches. We may even film on location sometime. But I do love to get out in the backyard because I can just walk out of the house and get right in my kitchen. We got us a little fire pit here. Now, you see, when my mom and dad lived in this house, there was a big old elm tree about 60, 80 foot tall stuck up through there. Lightning struck it one evening, split it right down the middle as all of that. So I cut it off. I did burn the stump out. Makes a good place to put a Dutch oven, build a fire. That way ain't burning the green grass out there. You will see me at times put Bertha on there, maybe Christine. I'm going over here to my kitchen. I got modern conveniences. You know what this cost? About $12 worth of tools and about two days worth of sweat and free pallets I picked up at the dump ground. You can do this too, DIY. Is that what you call it, Shane? Mm -hmm. DIY? Do it on your own time. That's what it's called. Got me a little knife holder here that I can keep. My famous dandy handy bendy mesquite spatula. And when I put these one by eights on here, I sanded them down good and smooth. Went ahead and stained them two different colors because I like a little contrast. And a marine varnish, about five coats. Well, folks, it's time for some more coating on the marine varnish. But put as many on there as you can. That way it protects it from the sunlight but also makes it waterproof. Maytag people and Sears and everybody, Home Depot, Lowe's, they be wanting this kitchen, they will. What do we got here? Whoa. That's what you call fancy, folks. Now, this is just some little old small wash tubs that I put in here. We cut them little old holes in there with a hole slaw, put as a drain. Coleslaw. Coleslaw? Holes, hole saw. Hole saw, yeah. Okay. It runs on a drill and got teeth on it, runs around, cuts that metal out. Go to your plumbing shop or wherever you need, get you a drain system that'll hook up in there. This is just a little old piece of black pipe that runs back through here to give me enough room to get water in the sink and then just a faucet. We have greenery in the kitchen. Hey, y'all know me folks, Shan has converted my life over to know Bill, Joe, Fred, and who is he? Herb. I got me some basil, which is not for me, it's for Shan, she like it. I got me some thyme, cause I always got thyme. And right over here, I have got me some rosemary. And what's this? Just shameless product placement. Whew. Sometimes even I have to look back at a recipe. You always see this little screened in house. My mother used to have one here for a tornado, got it and blowed it away. And me and Shannon, her mother built it back, but it keeps the flies and the skeeters out of there. If I want to cook inside, that's where I try to keep that half gas, half wood grill in there most of the time. Then I can pull it out here if I need to. Come on around here, Shen. As you can see, them drains, they just run right out there on the ground. I got these hooked right up. Got a splitter here, a Y, that you can turn them off if you need to or turn them on. Hooks right back to the water hose. And if you was to trail this thing back, where would it go, folks? The water faucet. That's it. It ain't no rocket science thing to build. I just covered the back side of this tin to make it a little more stouter. You got a little tour of the backyard you did in this little cooking setup we got here in our outdoor kitchen. And I think the Beagle would like to tell y'all bye. Hey, Big. Got anything you want to say to the peoples? Look over here at Mom. Right up here. Big. Hey, Big. Tell them bye. It's a tail wag. Good enough. <laughs>